This podcast contains merciless mega spoilers. Audience discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to Turn Based Memories, the best JRPG podcast in the whole wide world. I am one of your hosts, the legendary Zoltan, and later you'll be hearing from your other host, Mel, about Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age, released September 2018 for PS4 and PC, and developed by Armor Project, with Yuji Hori on story, Koichi Sugiyama on music, and Dragon Ball Guy on art. Usually one of us assigns a game that we love to the other person who has never played it, but since this is a brand new game, we've both just played it for the first time. It's going to be a grand old time as we find out if these three talents, who have been collaborating since the first game in the series back in 1986, can still do it on the 11th Dragon Quest for the 11th episode of Term-Based Memories. How good does it feel, you guys? How good does it feel, Mel, to play a AAA game that has the entire game, all of the quests, all of the characters, and all of the story in the goddamn game that you paid for? No day one DLC that is on the disc, no day one 45 gig patches, no game breaking bugs, no frame rate issues, no loot boxes, no microtransactions, just an amazing game for 60 bucks. How does it feel? It feels like you just got a super cute Japanese girlfriend whose favorite pastimes are baking homemade gourmet pizzas and playing with your sausage. That's what it feels like. Let Dragon Quest XI be a symbol to other developers of what a modern game should be. And what should a modern game be? A modern game, if Dragon Quest XI is anything to go by, an old game, and Dragon Quest XI is the old school shiant. We've got all the tried and true, soul comforting bed and breakfast Dragon Quest amenities. We've got the attack, attack, heal battle system. We've got slimes and green dragons. We've got girls with nice breasts doing the puff puff. I want to get one of those in real life. We got saving your game at the church. We've got losing half your gold when you die. We've got the casino, mini medals, a ship, puns galore, and Satan. This makes three out of the four Dragon Quest games I've played where the final boss is Satan. But do you want to know what Dragon Quest XI don't got that the others do? It's only the most important thing to the entire Dragon Quest franchise. It doesn't have the... Grind! Dragon Quest XI doesn't have a proper grind! Those bitches! Bitches, bitches, bitches! Why in a Dragon Quest game can I not feel my level ups? The only time I could feel the grind was in the very beginning because that's when all of your parameters are the smallest. Dragon Quest games are supposed to be about the grind. I don't want to have to use my brain to make more intelligent decisions. Because making more intelligent decisions means watching longer battle animations. I just want to press the attack button over and over. And when I level up, I want to be able to kill five more werewolves than I could before in the same amount of time. That is how you feel the grind. This game goes out of its way to remove grinding by doing some crazy things, man. It starts by making enemies visible on the field so you don't have to fight them. It mitigates how underleveled you can be by giving you tons of experience for bosses. Every character you recruit joins at the level your party should be. So for a long while, you'll always have one or two characters at the recommended level. And then, get this, they take away all of your party members and when you re-recruit them again, they are all leveled up to the new current recommended party level. Throughout the entire game, I only bothered to fight battles at four instances. In the very beginning, because it was fun. Right outside of Galopolis, because there are metal slimes there. In the final dungeon, because I thought it was the final dungeon. <laughs> and, they, and they had metal king slimes. And right before the actual final battle, where I used insane power leveling techniques that I got from the internet to go from level 53 all the way to 99. And that was all I did. 
In nearly every dungeon in the first third of the game, I only fought each new enemy once with the purpose of filling in all those question marks in the bestiary. And I stopped fighting battles pretty much entirely after the world turned dark and all my bestiary entries reverted back to question marks. So much for that idea. So if I can't enjoy the grind, what is there to enjoy about the battle system? Basically, it's all about the boss battles. They are freaking sweet. When you have an underleveled party like I did, every boss becomes very exciting. I died at some of the battles multiple times and lost all my money. And that's the way bosses should be. And most of the boss fights are well integrated into the story. In fact, nearly every quest in this game is well integrated into the story. By that, I mean that none of the quests feel like filler. None of the main quests, anyway. If you play an R&B RPG, where all you do is run and battle for hours before you get to the next substantial cutscene, you may find yourself thinking that they've taken a 30-hour story and warped it into a 70-hour journey by inserting all these long-ass stretches of traveling with random battles. You won't get that in this game. My Dragon Quest VIII save files were 140 hours because of all the dungeon crawling and overworld exploring I did with all the random battles. But in 11, I skipped most random battles and it's still over 100 hours of just story. Pretty epic. And it's not just the length that is epic either. The quality of the story is also top notch and it's brought to life amazingly well thanks to all the great characters with their great voice actors, the great big gorgeous towns, and the insane graphical textures. Who made these fucking graphics? I hope the upcoming new Emperor of Japan names the new era, era after the graphics designer of Dragon Quest XI. Mel said that Dragon Quest VIII's story was pretty forgettable in a previous episode. I have a feeling that he's going to tell me that XI's story is solid but still quite plain. But he's got to agree that the atmosphere and the characters make it really enjoyable. There is one thing that didn't help, but actually hurt the overall atmosphere, and that was the music. I hate to say it, but the music just sucks. It's not that the, the compositions weren't good enough. It was the sound quality, you know, was... <laughs> the sound quality was way too medieval. <laughs> Somebody call up Motui Sakuraba and ask him to lend you some orchestra samples, man. An equally vexing problem is that they used a bunch of songs from previous games. I found out from Star Ocean 5 that using music from older games, as is without remixing, is a surprisingly effective way to cheapen the experience. It doesn't help that all the Dragon Quest VIII songs are the best songs in the game either. Let's talk exploration. What is there to, on the field? I'm sorry, what is there to find on the overworld and in dungeons? Chests, harvest points, battles, and rideable monsters. That's about it. With the, with the exception of some rare monsters, you can see them all on the field, even the rideable ones. So no need to explore to find them. You can see all the harvest points on the map, so no need to explore to find them either. So that leaves just the treasure chests, the contents of which range from boring to amazing. Thanks to the graphics, the areas look great, so you could just explore for the sake of seeing what's around and take some screenshots. I did a lot of that. <laughs> oh, God damn it! I forgot something. You can also find those stupid crossbow targets. I have no idea if that quest has any good rewards or not, but I am not a fan of worldwide collectathons. Overall, I'd say the exploration kind of sucks. Until you lose all of your party members and it's just you and Hendrik, and you can go to a lot of different places. It's just like the difference between what Mel and I said about the exploration in Final Fantasy IV in, the, in a previous episode. The overworld exploration is good because you don't know what you're going to find at each location, but the in-dungeon exploration sucks because all that's in there are chests, and who cares about finding another mini-metal, or a healing item, or a crafting material, or a piece of equipment that will be obsolete by the next time you reach the next town. 
Speaking of crafting materials, why can't they put more crafting materials in the shops? It was fun at first crafting everything. When you start getting to the point where you need a monster's rare drop, I start losing interest in crafting. Now I suppose you're gonna tell me, Zoltan, what do you expect? How are they gonna be letting people craft epic weapons without hard to obtain items? Bitch, you don't know what you be talking about. All they have to do is make it like Star Ocean 2. You can buy all the ingredients and then make your character's skill at crafting be the barrier to success. And oh shit, I am a genius. So how about that ability system? It's pretty nifty. That's all I have to say about that. How about the pep abilities? They're pretty cool too. I keep hearing people complain about not being able to control it well. Dude, if they wanted the player to be able to control it, they wouldn't have made it random in the first place. Overall, I think Dragon Quest XI is really good for people who want to know, to know what the DQ hype is all about without grinding. I kind of think that defeats the purpose, though. <laughs> it's got a great story, great characters, great animations, great voice acting, great boss battles, a really solid uh, ability system, a, a solid classic battle system, and unbelievable graphics. What it doesn't have is good music, good exploration, or good grinding. And it is for these reasons that despite the high quality of this game, and although I would easily recommend it to most, it does not break into my top 20 RPGs. It does not pull off the battle system or exploration as well as Dragon Quest VIII or as well as Dragon Warrior. Suck on deck! In my top 10 JRPGs episode, I professed my love of Dragon Quest VIII. I'm probably gonna keep referencing that episode in the future, so you should probably watch it. And ever since that game's release, I've been looking forward to another game like it to come along. I've been waiting until last month, 13 damn years, because Dragon Quest didn't seem to have much interest in repeating the experiences of Dragon Quest VIII. Well, here we are, and we sure got more Dragon Quest VIII. It does do a lot of things differently, and I'm sure Zoltan will no doubt pick up on those things, he is an observant fellow, but just in case he didn't, or in case my opinions about those changes differ from his own, here's a couple quick takes of mine on those changes between Dragon Quest VIII and Dragon Quest XI. Change number one. Random encounters are mostly gone. I say mostly because when you get your ship, you do still encounter the battles randomly. Uh, I started out hating this thinking it took away from the spirit of the game, but ended up loving this change, because it let me choose how much time I spent in each area, essentially letting me customize the encounter rate on the fly. Zoltan, the completionist that he is, probably ran into every damn monster he saw, and somehow still finished the game before I did. <laughs> change number two. It's much more linear. Another change I thought I hated that turned out to be for the best, Dragon Quest VIII's open world design was actually not all that open. It included a ton of blank space and nothing but random encounters and occasional treasure chests. I think we discussed this a little bit at length in our uh, top 10 RPGs. It looked nice and impressive on PS2 for the time, but functionally this game's more linear world design suits the game better and provides a more bespoke experience, if you would. Maybe I'm talking out of my ass, or maybe my tastes have just changed over time, but I appreciated not needing to traipse across giant open fields for no payoff. Change number three. Combat no longer takes place in rounds. I assume Zoltan noticed this one as well. It seemed glaringly obvious to me at first, but in Dragon Quest VIII, and I think all prior games in the series, 
combat involved you plugging in all of your actions up front, then letting the actions resolve based on each participant's agility stat, I think. This would mean that you kind of had to predict if someone would survive long enough to be healed, for example, or else you'd waste a turn healing yourself or a dead corpse or something. In Dragon Quest XI, combat is turn-based per each character, so as soon as you're done inputting a command for someone, they immediately act and do that thing. It's a much more modern method, quote-unquote modern, circa 1999, of turn-based combat, and also a much more forgiving one. I'm torn between wanting the older style and appreciating the easier combat of the newer style. I think Zoltan will like the change, I think most people will probably like the change, and I get the feeling it's just a better combat style overall, and that maybe I'm just being a nostalgic grump. Change number four. No orchestrated music. There's actually a mod going around in the PC community that lets you run a reorchestrated fan-made version of the soundtrack. I've never listened to it. I have no idea how good that is. But I do know that the game's original soundtrack is woefully small. It's also not that great. Especially compared to Dragon Quest VIII. Uh, the same three town tracks, the same one or two combat tracks, a handful of tracks for cutscenes, and none of them really outdo or live up to Dragon Quest VIII's compositions. All of them got either boring or annoying after a while, and for a game that's this long, that's a big problem. I eventually lowered the music to basically one tick away from being at muted, because if I turned it off all the way, I'd probably miss some of the theatrical elements of the cutscenes, and also, if you totally turn off the music, you end up hearing this glaring problem with the VA that goes throughout the entire game, where literally every line has some amount of artificial reverb in every scene, and I have no idea why. <laughs> Change number five. The story this time is actually worth paying attention to. I had always thought Dragon Quest games had throwaway stories, and that the pure turn-based combat was the focus. And this still is kind of true, but what I was not prepared for was the story actually being worth my time, especially some key twists being as cool as they were. Nothing like this happened in Dragon Quest VIII, and while the plot definitely sags in this game in spots, I walked away really liking the whole cast. Even Eric, who had a New York accent for some reason. Change number- Alright, I'm done listing changes. Let's move on to some general observations of mine, and tippy-top of that list is... The... Did I hear you say shopping? Shopping day! It's awful! It's as bad as the shopping has always been in the rest of Dragon Quest games, this is very true, but the shopping and the inventory management is total ass, it has to be said. They try to make it less of a pain with the handy heal all option, which I never used because I'm stubborn, but each character needing to individually transfer items to and from their own equipment pools is as tedious as it sounds. Uh, the crafting is fun, the fun size forge is very appropriately named, and I even like the idea of segmenting access to your overall item pool, so that if, for example, character A needs healing herbs, you have to give character A the healing herbs. But all the shuffling around of items is bogus, and needs to be made much easier. The stat comparison in shops is also committing one of my sins. Go watch our sins episode, where they don't always show you every stat that's changing, forcing you to bounce between equip menus and shop menus, say goodbye to the vendor to look at the item properly, then say hello again to check his shop, and... Ugh, please, end this sad display of confusion. The pep system. Whoa, the pep system. I do not like it. 
It's random, it's often out of my control, it's often not lining up with what I need, I often can't make it work to my benefit, and when it does, what I need it to do is often not very satisfying. Dragon Quest VIII's tension system was a much better risk-reward mechanic that also made your dudes look basically Super Saiyan, so that was really cool. Pep is not cool. It is dumb. Side quests. I didn't really do them. I appreciated that they were there, but the rewards seldom seemed worth the time, especially since they told you they were going to give you, like, a bangle of poison resist that I knew I was never going to need. It's nice that they made fast travel easier, which I guess would make side quests easier. Uh, for example, you can now use Zoom inside of caves without needing to use Evac first, because you used to bump your head. Uh, that's all well and good. And also, it doesn't cost any mana. That's nice too. But it's still... I still didn't want to go through all of those side quests and hunt down all of their boring objectives. Uh, maybe it was just a nice idea that just wasn't for me. And finally, I touched on this briefly already, but the story is really cool this time around, and spoilers! The second half of the game, when the world tree falls and there's a fun twist on the progression, I know it's been done before in many other games, but seeing all the, these really evil looking creatures taking over the world and setting up this whole regime of evilness it's a lot more serious than I expected their, uh, Dragon Quest XI ever to get. And there was also a lot more personal drama that unfolded as a result. And that was also way more than I expected from a game about being the Chosen One and fighting a Dragon Lord. To wrap up, this game is very good. And I suspect, if we haven't already, we will be spoiling it a whole bunch more during our discussion ses uh, section. <laughs> uh, if Zoltan hasn't already spoiled the hell out of this game, do yourself a favor and play this game. I fully expect a similar recommendation to come from Zoltan. So, take those 80 hours, use them to play this game, you won't regret it. And welcome to the third segment of Turn-Based Memories, episode 11, where we have just played Dragon Quest XI for the first time, both of us. Uh, normally, uh, when we have just one of us assign a game to the other that we've already played and the other one has not played until just now, uh, that person would just ask a whole bunch of questions to the person who just played it. But we've only both just played it for the first time, so I'm going to go first and we're going to take turns asking each other things or commenting to each other about things. So, I will go first. Mel. How you doing, Mel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing good. That wasn't my question, though. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, that wasn't my only question. My turn's not I over aced yet. that one. <laughs> that doesn't use up my turn. Um, two questions in one. How far did you get, and what abilities in combat did you often use to get there? So how, how okay. far did you get? So I guess we're talking about the post-game, right? You got into the post-game, right? Yes. Okay. I got into it. <laughs> How far into so, that did you get? Okay. Hold I, on. I, I, spoiler <laughs> alert. I mean, I put a spoiler uh, alert at the beginning of my segment, but massive spoiler alert. We're going to talk about anything, okay, guys? So if you don't want to know, yeah. go play Dragon Quest XI first. Okay, go for it, dude. <laughs> so I got into the post game. I, um, what did I do? I got to the, the Arborea. And I basically wandered around for a little bit, and then I had to start doing some other stuff. So I really didn't play around with the post game at all. I heard from some comments that there's like a ton of shit in yeah. the post game. Wait, 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 Arborea? That's where you start the post game, isn't it? It is. <laughs> and then I, I left, right? And then I left that, and then I I collected um, the little gear thing, and I okay. went to the uh, the, the tower. 
the tower, okay. right? I'm, okay, it's, okay. it's like it was last week, so it's like I'm trying to remember. Okay. And then I went back in time. Okay, you did that. Okay, so you know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know, I know the premise of the post game. Uh, I don't know where it ultimately goes though. And as we agreed, uh, if you were further along, I was like, go ahead and if you want to spoil stuff, go ahead. Um. Oh, but you wanted to know uh, yeah, what abilities I use. So like what. What kind of like classes, so to speak, I picked for yeah. the characters? Yeah, because I I found like the winning combination for from this from point A to point B, and then when that stopped working, I found the next winning combination and the next winning combination, uh-huh. and that's kind of how I did it. So, how did you do it? I'll tell you what I did. Um, after. sure. I I didn't modify too many. Like I didn't respec any of my characters except for. Um, Rab, who I initially had with Claws, because like early on, I feel like the characters aren't differentiated enough, and you really don't like. I know almost didn't use Rab at all in the beginning, and in the second half, I used him a ton. Okay. Because the way the game works, you're, you're forced to use characters differently. Yeah. But then I, I switched him to Heavy Stabs, hmm. um, and I respect probably uh, what's her name, uh, the woman's name. Uh, Jade. Uh, Jade. I think I respect her. Uh, oh wait, no, I didn't. I respect uh, Serena. Uh, that's right, because like that's kind of a big deal. Her character goes through a big transformation, mm. and she she basically becomes Veronica and Serena yes. in the same character. Spoilers. Yes. And, <laughs> okay. Spoilers. Okay. So <laughs> no, it's just funny. And, um, so I, I took her off of Lance's. I initially had her mm. like a combat healer. That was awesome I in my her. opinion. I did that Yeah, too. I thought that worked really well in the beginning. And then I was like, no, nah, she needs to be doing more offense healing and and damage dealing. So I switched her to normal wands and dual wielding normal wands. which is really cool. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. You dual wielded the healing wands? Uh-huh. Well, does that... Okay, but you just use that for healing? Well, no, it just gives her better stats. You're not directly using the wands. The I know, is, but uh, well, the stats are like, for those single-handed wands, it's always a lot of uh, magical mending increase and a little bit of magical might, which means, because my idea was, well, if I gave her two wands, I could, I, did, I thought of that too, right? Then I could mm-hmm. like use some spells like way more offensively, but you can only, you know, dual hand, uh, dual wield. The light ones, which don't really give you much in terms of uh, magical might. So you're just using her for right. amazing healing spells then? I ended up going... I At first, I was like, she's going to do a little bit of both. But then I realized, because I gave her two healing wands, basically, she was mostly a healing mage. And yeah. then she really, really, really was good at that. And she was like... She would get, like, free turns every once in a while. Yeah. Like, spells, which was, like, a goddamn god save, Like, yeah. a game saver so many times. So, thank God something you mentioned in your segment about them letting uh, every turn... Uh, you not have to do everything in rounds, but in individual uh-huh. turns. Because... Now, all of a sudden, agility is way more useful because, like you said, oh, the really fast person can go twice before the boss or something. Oh, yes. So, so that was my general tactic. Like, toward the middle of the game, I sort of developed this tactic where I would have someone, usually Silvando, hmm. uh, be like this just 100% buff character. And oh, you yeah, would yeah. always throw down up to level 2 agility, mm-hmm. And then if that was up, then he'd either do like some sort of defense or a, a you know HP regen, mm. anything. Just keep throwing buffs on, and awesome. then once in a while, the boss would be like, "You've got too many buffs. Here's my buff clearing move." Oh, I'm like, "Great, you wasted wave. a move." Yeah, yeah, and and that means they waste a move not dealing damage, and I just have Silvando fucking throw more buffs on. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so. And it was really critical because especially the first thing I always prioritized was speed. Like the more turns you get, yeah, the better it is. Like always, totally. always, always, always. Yeah, just like so that was my general tactic. Yeah, just like starting from like this uh, SNES era onward. Uh, in most turn-based RPGs, like if there's just any stat worth upping, just up speed. Like it, it, it mm-hmm. totally mm-hmm. from SNES era through PS1 era. Oh man, if you could just up speed. Just up speed. <laughs> yes. That's how yes. I always was. Yeah. It's really awesome in uh, Xenogears. Uh, you know, same style where basically, you know, the person who, who's, you know, they have like some kind of 
ticker or counter that counts up to say maybe a hundred or something, and uh, whoever gets there first is the next turn. But in Xenogears, they actually show the gauge on the screen like in Final Fantasy, but it but it's completely turn based. So mm-hmm. it's like it's like the ATB, but then it stops, <laughs> so you can see it, and then it stops, and it feels really good when you cast like haste or up their speed because the freaking gauge just goes boom and f- fills up instantly. <laughs> feels so good. Okay, so I wanted to talk about that uh, post game content. It's pretty different from the one in 8. And it's hard to say which I prefer. Because in 8, the cool thing was that after you finished... Do you remember the ending of 8? So the ending of 8, I remember you fought a giant like purple dragon sort okay, of monster. Okay, not that ending. The, the, fa- the first ending. Sorry. The first ending. That wasn't the first ending? You'll no, have no, to remind me what just the first a, ending was. It was just a big demon guy. Okay, sorry. Basically, I want I to say that's what I was remembering. Yeah. Yeah. You fight the big purple demon guy and then yeah. the princess yeah, yeah, yeah. gets married to Prince Charmley, whose name is spelled like Prince Charmless. Charmless. <laughs> yes. Which was awesome. Very good. Do you remember that? You remember that, right? I, I remember the monster. I don't remember the story ending because I really just it didn't capture that's me right. at all. Okay. Well, like, I guess it captured me. You said it was forgettable. I remember in a previous episode. Uh-huh. But I thought it was awesome. And, uh, <laughs> they they really had my heart on the freaking strings uh, because uh, <laughs> they did because I was after the thing was over I was like well, that was a great game that was awesome now I can watch the ending and she gets married to Prince Charmley and I'm like are you serious like this is how it ends she gets married to Prince Charmley how how unsatisfied I am right now is how I felt mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, then they show you the little glimmer in the ending and you're like wait what's that go over there whole new dungeon and uh they finally show you how dragons are integrated into the story in dragon quest 8 in that ending area yeah took a while took a freaking while yeah uh i won't spoil it (laughs) since we're not talking about eight really uh Uh but i am gonna uh spoil that there is an alternate ending where you don't have to make her marry prince charmley I'll just say that. Oh, and, I feel like I maybe didn't. I must not have done that. I thought I did everything in that game, but mm, maybe, maybe not. I didn't. Did you maybe fight not. like seven dragon boss battles in a row? Yeah. Okay, then you sh- if you beat the final one and then beat the game again, that's how you get the next ending. Oh. So maybe you just need to beat the game again if you still have your save file. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in, it felt like a very optional thing. Like, you know, just choose who she's going to marry is like the only difference, right? And, wow. and find out how dragons are actually involved in the story. But in this one, it kind of felt like the story, the main story is really all the way through the quote-unquote post-game. I would just say that's just not really the post-game. That's all just the game. In this one? In this one, I would say that, yeah. Because really? at the end, of, because, you know, in this story, you know, when you beat the final boss the first time, you know, the world tree fell a million people died, you know, in the middle of the story. Uh, And one of your party members also died. And I was fine with allowing her sacrifice. I thought, I mean, you know, I was kind of bummed that she died. But I thought, whoa, that was awesome. Great story. And then, uh, but uh, yeah, the whole point, one of the main points of going back in time is, you know, a million people don't die. The world tree doesn't fall. Veronica doesn't have to sacrifice herself to save you. Mm -hmm. None of that happens. It's kind of like basically go back in time to get the best possible ending. Uh And it goes on. And if you do that, it shows how uh, this story is connected to the the lore of how, you know, there was a long time ago, there was Erdwin and his night guy. And yeah, they show how all that's kind of connected. And even they show... Where are those old people now? You think they'd just be dead, right? Yeah, they're not just dead. <laughs> so do you get to play with those characters or you just meet them? You meet them. Okay. Yeah. But uh, you can find the armor throughout the game that makes them look <laughs> just like those guys. Nice. Yeah. I like the, the the changing armor. Certain things having oh, yeah. different like armor effects was like one of the coolest surprises that I didn't notice uh didn't see coming i was like whoa he just fucking made this dude look exactly like uh the knight yeah the the what's it called the the dundrasil knights uh dundrasil that's right yes yeah, yeah that was I, really cool 
Yeah, I got that Dungeon Soul armor too, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. And of course, when I found the casino, I had to get the bunny suit and leave it on mm. uh, Jade for like the whole game. <laughs> I avoided the casino because I was like, I, I don't have time. I have to go. Uh, <laughs> I don't yeah. want to get stuck in this casino. What was your uh, final game time about? Uh, just under 70 hours. And I tried not to like let the game timer <laughs> run. <laughs> yeah. So I tried to get like as an accurate a game time as possible. It was like just under 70 hours. Okay. Why? So, what did you hit? Yeah. <laughs> so that's really weird. Um, I I didn't have the accurate timer, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and subtract. And this is gonna kind of blow your mind. Thirty whole hours from mine, because that well, you know, I have kids. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you could leave the game running. That's easy to do. You could like, leave the game running, and suddenly you have a hundred hours on the clock. Yeah, mo, literally two hours every day. The game was just sitting there. <laughs> sure, uh, so, I've I've done that too. Yeah, so I'm gonna say minus an entire thirty hours. Then my final time was 120 hours. Now I got to the end of the uh, right. of the whole thing. Uh, you know, I didn't do everything, but I got to the end. But mm -hmm. that's kind of funny that you still got that far in just 70 while fighting lots of battles because I skipped tons of battles. So I skipped battles too. I assumed that you were well. I when you when you finished before me, I was like. I guess maybe not. Maybe he is skipping battles, but I kind of figured maybe you just, I don't know, playing more often or you started way earlier or I don't know what happened, but mm. uh, I ended up skipping a ton. I probably did almost exactly the same thing you did where I, I fought every monster that I saw for the first time. And then to try and not screw myself too hard, what I would usually do is fight like every other group of monster that I saw. Uh, to try to keep a pace with the experience and not fall too far behind. Because mm -hmm. like you said, the way we did it, the uh, boss fights were tough. For you for too, sure. then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Boss fights were very tough. I started on hard mode, and then I switched out of hard mode uh, when <laughs> when I met the uh, the octopus boss outside of Lona Lulu. <laughs> Yeah, the octopus. There were a lot of fights that came so fucking down to the wire. Like, awesome. I'm out of healing. I'm out of mana. My healers are all dead. I have no fucking interstellar leaves left. Did you have? Did oh. you? <laughs> did you do the hail mary where like this is my last attack and yeah. you do it? You got it. Well, what I would do is say, all right, I have no... It doesn't make any more sense for my characters to do anything defense-wise. Yeah. Literally, everyone just start attacking. And if I lose, <laughs> I lose. If I win, I win. And there were two or three big boss battles where I eked it out. Like, like awesome. the only one left was... Uh, what's his name? The the, the night guy. Um, Sir Hendrick. No, Jasper. Hen no, no, Jasper's the evil guy. Oh, not uh, him. Hendrick your, is the good guy. Hendrick. Right? Hendrick, yeah. yeah. Hendrick, who sounds, whose voice actor, uh, no, I'm terrible at names. He sounds like uh, the guy who did um, the concierge in Home Alone. I don't remember that. <laughs> oh, if you know who I'm talking about. I don't remember. Uh, or the guy who job, played though. the... The devil. He he sounds like he's totally ripping the voice of uh, the guy actor. Fuck. He was in Legend. You ever seen the movie Legend? I did not. I'm sorry. All right. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Moving on. Okay. All right. So I think that's uh yeah. Oh, I, I want to tell you how I got through what, what abilities I liked. Yeah. Go ahead. And then your question. So uh, I started off noticing that you know you could wield single hand sword and uh. And a shield or the great sword. And like at first I was like, dude, it's all about the defense at Dragon Quest games. Of course I'm gonna wield the shield. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh and, and I totally needed it in the beginning because I was playing on hard mode and you have the uh, occasional chance to block an enemy's attack if you have a shield. So that was nice and it actually was helping. But after grinding a little bit in the beginning and I got strong enough. I realized that if I just put on the two-handed sword, I could one-shot dudes finally. <laughs> hmm. So I was doing that for a while, and uh, I didn't have any real strategies in the beginning. But uh, eventually, I got to a point where, like, just all the 
all the just random different attacks and heals spells and stuff that I was ha I was using weren't working for me anymore. So uh, mm -hmm. I freaking respec. Van oh, sorry, I named my character Vance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I wanted him to have a narcissist name, and that's a great narcissist name. So <laughs> I named him Vance, and uh, I respect Vance to be a full-on offensive uh, great swords guy. And the reason I did mm -hmm. is that I noticed way up at the top of the great swords tr tree is a freaking strength plus twenty-five, man. So <laughs> I worked my way up to there, got strength plus twenty-five, and I also unlocked an ability called uh, Uncut Blade Un. A cut above? No, a cut above is a different one. Cut above. A cut above there's is a different one. Though. That. Well, maybe okay. that was the one. I can't remember, but there's like the a one that hits six times. Yeah, that's a cut above. So that wasn't the one. It's the one where his like his sword gets energy on it, so that it looks like the sword is twice as long, and then he hits the guy, and that was doing some sick damage. And then later, I mm. unlocked the ability called Unbridled Blade, which is the same thing and almost the exact same animation, just <laughs> twice as strong. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, and so coupling that with uh, oomph and later on oomphful oh, from yeah, oomph uh, from Silvano. Oomphful all day, baby. Oomphful all day, man. Man, I was all of a sudden I went from like dealing fifty or fifty to hundred damage with a single attack to using freaking oomphful and unbridled blade, instant four hundred damage. So mm -hmm. that was working for me for a long time, and then uh, later I started having troubles with uh, Silvando's hustle dance not being. Uh, strong enough to heal everybody, mm -hmm. uh, but then freaking uh, Rab and so I would put two healers. I'd put Rab in there also to do multi heal, and then mm -hmm. also add the hustle dance on top of it. And then like later, now what am I gonna do? Even having a multi heal and a hustle dance, it's kind of too hard. I can't put any other buffs on anybody. I can't cast sap on the enemy or oomphal on anybody. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, finally, uh, later on, we leveled up enough to get freaking Omni Heal, and the whole world changed, and just it, it heals everyone for max HP every time, so it's perfect. I don't think I ever unlocked Omni Heal. I think I was using Multi Heal the whole fucking game. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, uh, but just to quickly aside there on the what I did with the main character, I did sort of the same thing, but I did dual wielding one-handed swords. I did and, it for a while, too. Mm -hmm. And then if you have two Falcon Blades and you do Falcon Edge, you hit like six times. <laughs> that is awesome. But, but not for a lot of damage. Yeah. Unfortunately. unfortunately. And also, uh, th I noticed they did this uh, in this game. The left hand doesn't hit as strongly as the right hand. Unless it's like less than half. It's less than half. Yeah. It's like a fourth or a third or something. Yeah. Uh, it's bad. And, and the only person it, that works on is freak I notice it really works well on is freaking Eric uh mm, which the knives well it doesn't matter which I use uh, swords with him actually but uh, oh I use them with knives yeah no I went swords and then uh I got dual wielding with him and then he has an ability that makes both hands equally strong completely oh, ambidextrous and I so don't once think you I get do that yeah so once you get that I don't know I I leveled up to basically 99 so <laughs> Well, that's how I found out all this stuff. <laughs> I I used Eric as like a just a big DOT character. He would just throw down some sort of sigil or po poison what or whatever. What does DOT stand for? Sorry. Uh, damage over time. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was useful. I mean, yeah, that was his big thing because he had no real spells, at least not the way I built him. No spells. He would just mm -hmm. throw down like those sigils yeah. and those would hit for a lot and it would also weaken their defense to certain things. Totally. And, did you and, know, did you yeah, know that the strongest one of those that he has is called Ridge razor? <laughs> I did not know. Raise up a ridge. No. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's pretty great. Oh, and by the way, that actor I was thinking of who sounds like a uh, Hendrick is Tim Curry. Oh, uh, okay. I, I don't remember what he was in though, but I know the name. Yeah. Tim Curry is, it, it a British guy, and this guy who does Hendrix voice acting it sounds like he's going for a Tim Curry voice. <laughs> it's really good, though. <laughs> yeah, I thought he did a great job. Your unswerving companion. <laughs> I did not expect to play as uh, Hendrick in this game. I thought that was a really cool turn. I was like, oh, shit, they're going to let me fucking have this guy in my party. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I was, I was surprised at that one, too. I was really happy, like, too. 
that that is why not to get too far off your first question but that is part of the reason why i thought the story in this game was way cooler because there were like turns and twists in it that you yeah like from the outset you couldn't necessarily see it coming compared to eight where i thought i was like i know exactly what's gonna happen yeah. in this game. <laughs> <laughs> okay that's the end of my question that was a long all one. right <laughs> That's fine. Um, so uh, I just wanted to comment that, yes, I would also very much agree that playing this game and having this be a full experience without any sort of carved out DLC or microtransaction stuff that you have to like wait for or pay more for is a really nice and sort of refreshing sort of like pure experience. It's offline. It's single player, it's just a campaign, and you just go forward. <laughs> I thought good. that was nice and, yeah, refreshing for a new, good-looking game with mostly very, very good production values. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're referring to. <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. Do I have a So question? what was your next point? <laughs> yeah. So about that, uh, what you just said, yeah, uh... I don't know, man. Every every time, I feel like the Western gaming industry is totally dying, in my opinion. I mean, you might, but what are you talking about? People are still buying games. Yeah, they are. But I don't know. Like, it just seems like most of the people that are that are buying the games that are making these huge numbers of people buying, you know, selling millions and millions of copies is the quote unquote normies. You know, people mm. who aren't hardcore gamers. Just you know, they have. A PlayStation. They're gonna kill some time every weekend. They just go out buy mm-hmm. a game. They haven't like looked into it deeply. Just buy the one that is like yeah. advertised at the front of the store, or they just heard the name of, like like God of War or something like that, maybe. Sure. But uh, what once, you know, gaming is kind of new in terms of technology and mm-hmm. and uh, as an industry. And uh, I heard somebody else give this opinion, which I thought was really interesting and dramatic. Once, so it's not from me, it's from this person, person but uh, I thought it, it was a really cool idea. Once something more like appealing than gaming comes out, all of those people are instantly going to leave gaming forever. What would that be? Have no freaking idea. Yeah, I don't know what it would be, right. but I know what you're saying. It's uh, the people who buy one or two games a year, and one of them is Madden, <laughs> you know, and yeah, nothing wrong with that, but those are like dollar for dollar those are the majority of people who do buy games yeah so and yeah. uh then once that happens if it's just hardcore gamers still playing games then uh yeah there's no way companies are going to be able to keep doing all these terrible things with uh, microtransactions and loot boxes because mm. that that's the audience that will actually boycott a game if it if it's doing stuff like that i think and censorship sure. so yeah, they won't all boycott it and then end up being seen like through Steam playing, having bought that game. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is like a famous like boycott Call of Duty and then the screenshot next to it of all of those people yeah. who are in the boycott Call of Duty group all yeah. playing the newest one. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> so yeah, felt yeah. good to play a pure game. And I believe I remember Yuji Horty saying uh, that, you know, I just want it to be... He, he gave the reason that he wanted it to be like a classic old-school RPG, mm. which is, I guess, a reason. If you like that reason, it's fine. But I would prefer the the reason that you do it is that because you recognize all those other things as being uh, not, non, uh, anti-consumer. Not good. Yeah, yeah, just not good in general. And uh, I remember back when Star Ocean 5 came out, which wasn't a very popular Star Ocean, but the dude, uh, his name is Kobayashi, the, the producer... He freaking, I just, like, he, he's one of those awesome people in gaming who's who says things like, yeah, sorry, guys, there's not going to be any story DLC because <laughs> it's against my personal policy to have story DLC. And when I heard him say I was like, bravo, man, I give you the slow clap. <laughs> was it uh, Yuji Hori who said that there won't be any DLC for this game because it's a complete game? I thought <laughs> it was him. Yes, I thought it was yeah. him. Right. Yeah. Which is a real good burn on yeah. on all the <laughs> DLC games. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no DLC. This game is complete. <laughs> totally. Good job. <laughs> That's great. It's yeah. a really good one. Okay. My next uh, thing to you was uh, 
this, this shouldn't take long. What did you think about the weapon designs themselves? I don't know if Akira Toriyama did them uh, himself. It just mm. always just says character designer Akira Toriyama, so I don't know. But since 8, I thought, oh my god, like these swords look so cool. Like I, I think in 8, they also changed just the, uh, the uh, weapon sprite mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. so so you could see it in the bat uh, the weapon at least maybe not the armor but the weapon uh and then in this one of course even way more better graphics you could see these big beautiful swords and stuff on the backs of the characters and in their hands and every time i look in the menus or just even in the battle i think man my swords look freaking amazing and if you know there's a phrase called armor porn and uh yes. yeah which i guess it just means make really pretty armor so that people who yeah. are interested in that can get gratuitous beautiful armor <laughs> I, i'm one of those people i am a <laughs> i like armor and sword pornography <laughs> mm -hmm. i think i definitely fall into that gap especially when it feels like this looks like an upgrade like, yeah. you know and it, it looks it's satisfying you know the armor is shinier than the other armor especially mm. if they start you out like shade with like a wooden sword or a tiny yeah. dinky sword and you're like i know this is gonna get real good <laughs> it feels good but yeah. uh yeah i thought that was nice just like i did in dragon quest 8 although in dragon quest 8 that game was so fucking old school you never saw your characters unless they started to attack because they did that really <laughs> traditional like enemies in a line yeah, straight head-on camera angle yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is really, I admire it in a way. And this one, they let you run around, which I didn't do. I, I set the camera to standard. So did like, I. Because yeah, it shows I, more I interesting one. angles, dude. Like if, when you're, mm -hmm. I mean, you saw it. Like, especially like say when you're fighting really big dudes, like the, uh, I remember particularly the octopus boss had a lot of really creative camera angles. And you there, were. There, the whole idea behind the character art, is that it's meant to be looked at from a certain angle. If you ever look at the way, um, like, all of the dragons, and not just the dragons, but uh, most of the characters do this really iconic, like, side eye. Yeah. Sort of looking at the sideways thing. Like, almost all the dragons do it. Uh. And that doesn't play when you're behind them. <laughs> <laughs> I did that and, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I ran around at first in the battles because it was cool. But then I was like, I don't, have, I'm not going to be doing this. So I turned it <laughs> off. I let it be the more cinematic style thing. Although that does run into a problem once or twice because the game can't always seem to make up its mind if it's going to tell you the enemy has low health over the enemy's head or in oh, the yeah. dialogue box when you select them. Yeah. And sometimes the little status effect that they're. Mm -hmm. Might might be suffering gets cut off yeah, by the static camera angle. I'm like this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> this is really important info. Yeah, they did. They did make that uh, mistake. <laughs> but I, the one problem I have uh, with the, I mean, to answer your question, yeah, the weapons were really awesome, and a few occasions where your characters, like Hendrik, got the really cool, like weird cape knight like royalty looking yeah. dress up thing that was cool yeah that was awesome. um the the one thing i had a problem with the camera angles was um i wish the transition into battle was like instant mm. that would have been great like because the way they do it is they put a little circle on the ground and all the other enemies are running around and you're fighting where you ran into the dude but they still have this like slow transition whoosh yeah. old school like as if you're loading into another area but you're not well no no you're no just... I, actually so it depends on where you fight them if you're on like a thin passageway when you enter the battle you'll be like transported a little bit to the side where it's a little mm -hmm. bit more open and stuff i guess so yeah so yeah it wasn't always right where you stand i noticed and so i guess that's the reason why that it Probably. would be too hard for them to figure out, well, what are we going to do about battles and tight passages and stuff, <laughs> I guess. Just don't put monsters there. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, put them in the opening spaces. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, it was mm -hmm. good. Okay. Yeah, it, it really just made me happy to see all the awesome swords. And that was one of the things in Dragon Quest Eight where I thought, you know what, man? These swords look so cool. 
I'm going to collect them all. But I never did because you have to try to steal freaking orichalcums and things from, from monsters, oh. which are rare steals. And rare steals in Dragon Quest Eight are like one out of 256 chance, man. <laughs> so they didn't, do, they didn't do anything that crazy with uh, percentages in this game, at least. <laughs> that was the end of my question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. This one's more of a comment. So instead, what I'll say is I'll, I'll switch it up. I'll say, um, so you didn't like the fact that enemies were present on the field, right? In the you end, I think I did not. Okay. So you would have preferred the whole thing was like the other one, random encounter? I think I would have, yeah. I mean, because yeah. it, it, take, it takes away from the journey. Mm. You know, I like, kind of agree. Like, it took me maybe halfway through the game, and maybe it was because I was like, I on sort of a deadline that I was like, I really appreciate the fact that if I feel like skipping these battles, I totally can. But mm. at first, I was like, I feel like I'm either going to be under leveled or over leveled because either if I run into every damn monster, I'm probably going to be over leveled, right? Because they yeah. expect you to skip some monsters. But how many is some? I don't know. <laughs> now I have to like worry about how many monsters I'm skipping, and it really bothered me for like about half the playtime. And huh. then toward once I started to realize that I kind of wasn't too drastically under leveled by skipping stuff and whatever, I was like, I guess I'm on a really good pace, so I guess it doesn't really matter. And then in the instances where I needed to get from A to B between a bunch of monsters, it was kind of nice to just be able to, like, scoop a dupe around the monsters, and they don't even fucking chase you. Like, they just, they Not stand much. there. Yeah. Some of them run away. <laughs> yeah. So, Once you're high enough level, was, all the lower level enemies mm -hmm. run away from you. When they run at you, you can run faster. Because, I don't know if you know, but they added the sprint feature into the western release. Yes. That wasn't in the original. Yeah. You couldn't sprint. So I'm yeah. guessing you couldn't previously outrun the monsters because if you didn't sprint, I think they'd catch up to you. Mm, maybe. It's possible. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, never, I, I sprinted all the time. Always sprinting. Always so, be sprinting. Same here. You know, they did the exact same thing with Star Ocean 5 where Japanese version didn't have a sprint, added it into the English version. Like, mm. do they just think American people have to go fast or they're going to be annoyed? <laughs> I just wonder. That's maybe. Like, Two different games that has the exact same interesting feature like that. So you just oh. basically went into kind of one of my other questions. So I'll just do that one now. Go for it. Um, I mean, I guess you kind of asked, answered it already. So I'll just say what I was going to say was, doesn't allowing you to customize how much time you spend in each area because of the battles, uh, doesn't that just mean that you spend as little time as possible in each area? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Avoid all the battles because you can. <laughs> Uh-huh, pretty much. I mean, I avoided, like I said, I tried to fight every new monster I hadn't seen before once in case yeah. something happened or a drop or, you know, whatever. Or just to have, yeah. you know, just to engage with this fucking video game that I'm <laughs> that paying for, you know? For, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but... Uh, the, the one thing I really wish would happen is if when you bumped into low le lower level monsters with your horse that you would get some experience. That would have been cool. I <laughs> That would have been, well, it would have been like kind of cheesy. and <laughs> I guess, but like, okay, half just, just, or a third. I don't know. I, what, <laughs> I don't know. So the, you just hit on a, on a mechanic that I've wanted in every game ever. And uh, I hear that it is in one game, maybe. Uh, but I, I thought that I had made this up. <laughs> so... Uh, and that is, uh, when you, just just like in this game, when you hit them with your sword once, and in this game, they actually let you deal some damage before mm -hmm. you fight them, apparently. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. My dream is that once you can just hit them with the sword and it's enough damage to kill them, just let them instantly be dead and you get the experience. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. <laughs> but you would have to hit them for one standard attack enough to kill them. So it'd be pretty rare, yeah. You would be so overleveled that the amount of experience you're gaining, at least in this game, would be like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, and yeah, as you heard in my segment, the levels aren't really that dramatic. 
the level ups. No, they're really not. And yeah. you do. I didn't know. Do, this is one thing that you're always way more in tune with. And I guess this mm-hmm. this does kind of flow into one my next question, actually, or okay. my next comment was uh you're way more in tune to like the grind of things in these games these things always just like sort of i don't know they they don't register with me until you seem to comment on them and then i'm like i totally agree and in this case (laughs) yeah there's no grind in this game the way there definitely was in dragon quest 8 there really was there was i had to grind a little bit because i was underleveled in like one or two boss fights mm. uh but i felt like if i had played at a more normal pace i probably wouldn't have had to grind and like you said the boss fights dole out like just mountains of yeah, yeah. <laughs> experience Damage. points oh, experience, it's really yeah. funny. they do a lot <laughs> Um, I think when you're under leveled, that it's basically one whole level up uh that they give you when you're under leveled at least yeah that's what yeah. it seemed like anyway yeah so I was noticing, uh, like I for the first fifteen levels of Vance's upgrades, uh, level ups, I wrote down all the stats, and at the beginning it's just like you know three HP, three HP, four HP, five HP, but eventually it got to this point where it was basically every single level up was plus eight HP, plus like uh, f- four magic points, and then plus three attack and plus one defense, and that happened mm-hmm. for many, many, many levels, and then I guess when I at some point when I stopped. You know, after I stopped uh, recording it, at some point there was some milestone maybe where it upped it. Like near the end of the game, like in the 80s, I was noticing that one level was now like uh, it was still only like three or four attack, but then it was like three defense every time for some reason. So hmm. that was that was nice, I guess. But uh, it it this just is just like a lot of games in this game. The whole point of the level up, I guess, is just to get some more HP. There's a lot of games like that where they just use the Atta- the yeah. equipment for the attack and defense, mm-hmm. and they just use the level ups for a little more attack, a little more defense, and some magic points and H point uh, hit points is the main reason to get it. And usually access to spells because you would yes. automatically learn stuff on level up, and then also yeah. you would get those uh, character points that you could use. Those those yeah. were the real progression were. Yeah, so that's where like if you wanted to grind something, you would grind the skill points. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, the spells. Uh, I actually, that's something I noticed back in the PS1 days, is I felt way back then one day I told myself, you know, I think I prefer when you get abilities just by leveling up. I told that to myself one day, and I kind of felt that again in this time because the level up abilities kind of seemed way more useful to me than uh, most of the learnable abilities, but I don't know, maybe I was just bad at using them. (laughs) Hmm. Okay. So... Uh, you went into your next one, so it's my turn again. Yeah. Your okay. Turn. Let's go music. Uh, we already both agreed that the music sounds like crap. <laughs> yeah. But terrible. Well, yeah. So okay, go ahead and say say. Do you have anything to say about that for now? Uh, I did try. I did play briefly with the music muted totally, and I was like, oh, this is very nice and peaceful and quiet. Like it's a big bustling town, and you know, all you're hearing is like the wind and some footsteps, and it's very calm. Mm. But like I said in my segment. They did, they did something with the voice acting. They fucked up somewhere. Everyone sounds that. like they're in. You you won't because the music masks it. Oh. That's why I had to turn it back on. Yeah. Because everyone sounds really like they added in post, like this echo effect, like really subtle. Even when they're like outside in a forest, and it's so <laughs> annoying. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed uh, that when I first started my game, you played on PC, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah, I played on PS4, and I noticed that uh, it, it seemed like the music was way too loud, and it was kind of overpowering all the opening cutscenes. I was hmm. like, "Am I like, am I hearing this correctly?" And so later, I went in and I just like turned it like way down, and I also mm-hmm. turned maybe like the sound effects down a little bit. Uh, but the default settings were ten, ten, ten. They're all set to like the max mm-hmm. with, as the default, which is often mm-hmm. the case in uh, you know console games. I watched sure. somebody do like a little bit of a let's play just the very beginning of the PC version. It looked, I may have mistakenly seen, I may be seeing things, but it looked like when he went into the options menu, the default uh, volumes were like three and six and seven or something and not hmm. 10, 10, 10. And uh, 
I think I remember them being all at 10, and then I lowered the volume for uh, the music, like, way down. Okay. Then maybe I saw something. I was just seeing things. But maybe anyway, that was just after the fact. I yeah. Don't. Anyway, the thing I really wanted to ask you is, what did you think about the reused music? Did you notice that there were songs from uh, Dragon Quest Oh yeah. in there? I listened to the Dragon Quest Eight soundtrack a ton, so I okay. I noticed every one yeah. of the tracks that they sort of took inspiration from. Yeah, and not, not took I, inspiration from. It was the same track, yo. No, they were different. What? They were a what? little different. Which one? There was one that wasn't maybe slightly wasn't different, which was like the church. That, da, 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 da. Yeah, that one. Uh, that one was almost identical, but still had a few tr- differences. Everything else was slightly different, and in my opinion, kind of slightly not as good. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Like, I, the way I, it flowed. Okay, well, I think... I, I'm going to say that it, they were the exact same songs, but I think the reason you thought they sounded different is because... Uh, those weren't the the full orchestra versions. Those were MIDI versions, and maybe that was the only difference. Maybe the, they were taken directly from the original MIDI versions for the Dragon Quest Eight. That's game, what, that's what I'm right? saying. Because basically, oh. like the um, the uh, gotcha. like there's that song called Chatting. I think it's called Chatting, uh, where it's a, it's one cool. of the town themes. I think it's the theme for Gondolia. That one. Sounded mm-hmm. exactly the same to me in terms of, you know, notes. Um, yeah, so I'm guessing what I... Because the soundtrack I know and listened to was the Western release of Dragon Quest Eight, which had yeah. the orchestral... Yeah, me, me right. too. So that's different. Yeah. So you didn't notice that it wasn't full orchestra for, for one thing? Oh, I totally, I totally okay. noticed. You noticed that. that. It didn't sound as good. And then I read why. And then I, yeah. on top of that, having not heard the original Dragon Quest Eight soundtrack... It all just sounded even worse. Like in terms of like composition, like I didn't like the way it was. It sounded like a worse inspired, like someone less inspired. Just, yeah, less inspired takes on everything I had already heard. Yeah. From Greg yeah. So I heard like a little bit, just a little bit of the of the original one, and I was like, oh my god, thank god we got full orchestra on our one is what i thought at the time yeah and for i don't know why they couldn't swing it for this one like they did everything else i pretty well i heard it has something to do with the koichi sugiyama's uh like requirements for when he has a full orchestra every single person in the orchestra must be compensated to re oh, wow. to have their songs in like the game or something uh, mm. I, I'm not sure. I just heard that little. That might be true. Bit. Although I don't know if this popped up on the uh, PS4 version, but on the PC version, there's a little sub menu in the opening. It's like streaming policy, and then you can go into that, and it says you are free to stream this game, but please mm. note that any uh, you are not permitted to uh, dude, post story any footage. Scenes. <laughs> no, no, you are not promoted to post any footage for the exclusive purpose of listening to the music. Uh, like they, they enumerate that yeah. you cannot just isolate the sound and have that be on like YouTube or something. Yeah. So there are weird, there are definitely weird things going on with the music. And I'm guessing Sugiyama has something to do with it. I know yeah. the guy's like a thousand years old. I don't know. <laughs> But um, it, the end result was not good, and I heard a lot of very good talk about some PC mod that was going around that puts in like fan made, reorchestrated. I, I don't know where it is. I didn't listen, but yeah, I was tempted to try that out. Never did. Yeah, it probably sounded way better. And uh, I heard another rumor from uh, from Zoltan. Mm-hmm. Doesn't ever have solid facts, just rumors. <laughs> um, <laughs> That there actually was a live uh, orchestra recording of this game soundtrack, but uh, they didn't put it in because of you know money reasons or something. <sighs> that's so dumb. I know, right? Yeah. So, but uh, anyway, the thing I'm still not sure what difference you heard in the compositions themselves in those songs because they all sounded exactly the same to me, not remixed in basically any way. But the thing I just want to say is I don't know. Every time I heard. A song from a previous game. I don't know if all those songs on the Dragon Quest VIII soundtrack originated from Dragon Quest VIII because they also have like a Dragon Quest III song in this game, and you know that's been mm. in a lot of games. So, for example, if you played 
like Dragon Quest Builders, for, and it's your first Dragon Quest game, you might think, oh, this song is awesome, and not know that it's from a previous game. Uh, mm. So I don't know if they use any of those songs that I thought were all original from Dragon Quest VIII, are there, if there, any of them are from previous games. I don't think they are. But uh, So I'm just going to assume they're all from eight. Every time I heard a song from there, something about that really, really makes the... What do I want to say? It, it destroys the immersion, I think, a little mm. bit. I don't know. Just the exact same thing happened to me with uh, Star Ocean 5. They made it a very low-budget game, and so they use a lot of old uh, Motui Sagaraba songs from previous Star Oceans, which are great songs, but it's like you're going to play this song that's you know, basically in my mind it printed to be in this area's music. In this area now? Like, what's going on here? It just feels weird. I don't like the feeling. Hmm. You didn't care about that so much, huh? Um, I think I... I well, I mean, I was going to say if they had just done the exact same music, but you're saying it is the exact same music. Yeah. I don't know. If they had done the exact same orchestrated Dragon Quest Eight music... Uh. It would have been better, in my opinion, than what we got. Okay. It still would have been a letdown because, of course, I would have preferred new songs, yeah. New orchestrations, new compositions yeah. would have been nice. But yeah, it's easily, hands down, the weakest element of the entire game. Yeah. And I don't think anyone really. I think it's the least controversial thing to say, too, because yeah, there's like so much agree. hate everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> this soundtrack sucks. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was my uh, my question. Okay. Um. So one thing you noticed, uh, you mentioned during your segment was that you lost to some uh boss battles over and over, and ended up losing all your money. Uh, did you not use the auto save? Uh, re- you know, like s- uh. return to auto save feature? Uh. Um, because there were. So I think I just made a mistake somewhere because uh, there were a couple times when I thought I did use the autosave and it uh-huh. still returned me to the autosave with half the gold, I hmm. thought. So maybe it was just a mistake because, yeah, most of the time I, when I used the autosave, uh, it just said, you know, it's going to revert back to what you had at the autosave, yeah. which is what we would have liked, right? But, uh, I, I guess if you want to do it, I mean, I, I, I'm okay with the penalty for losing. You know, there should yeah. be you get to keep the experience, but you lose the money. Yeah. Um, and the but, items you get to keep the items too, so I like that. And the items, yeah. Yeah. Right. But I think so you're, you're, yeah. I think whatever items you used in the battle stay gone, right? I oh can't. yeah, it's it. The whole idea is that you are like being resurrected. Like everything happened. Yeah, everything You're happened. You're not doing yes. anything over. Yes. You're just being resurrected, and you have to pay a fee to the church. Yeah, exactly. That's kind so, of what happened. Is yeah. the idea. Yeah, most of the time I just did that. <laughs> yeah, the standard like normal video game scenario where you just like roll back time. That didn't happen. Yep. And go back <laughs> to an auto save is more convenient. Like I get the idea. Like the original premise is. Well, Dragon Quest is a game where no matter how bad you are, if you just keep trying, you will win because you're always going to progress, even uh, if you die over and over and over. Yes. That was the original concept. Yeah. Was it was a game that literally anyone could play and win. Eventually. And you, <laughs> you would die over and over and over, but you would keep, keep, keep getting stronger. Um, you know, for the idea that children who are maybe not so good at planning or strategizing would eventually win and be able to proceed. So that was like one of the original kernels yes. of the idea. And this kind of is like, no, nah, I know what I did wrong. I just had to not fuck up yeah. in that fight. <laughs> and also, it doesn't work as well in this game because, like I said, there's not much of a grind. The levels aren't that great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But I still did that anyway. <laughs> I don't know, because I'm classic like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a hard time with... Uh, with a lot of, <laughs> with most of the bosses up till the to the Lone Lulu, uh, uh octopus fight because I was on hard mode up until then, and then uh, oh yeah yeah you know you can do that draconian quest stuff dude why do they make one of the draconian quests no shopping what a lame quest I don't think I ever touched those well you didn't want to look at the the list though like 
before you start. Draconian Quest. I, mean, I totally missed this. Where are you seeing this? When you first start the game, say select uh -huh. new game, and uh -huh. then it's like uh, somewhere in one of those menus, it says Draconian Quest, and you just click on it, and it says Oof. you could choose a whole bunch of different restrictions to place on your game to make it more interesting. Shit. Yeah, and so I one of them was all enemies are super hard. I turned that bitch huh. on, man. <laughs> Do, does it give you anything, or is it just like a fucking eating credit? It's, it's ba it doesn't give you anything, and it's basically okay. enemies deal double damage. It's Shit. it's freaking crazy. So, yeah, you played like half the game with double damage on for no reason. Maybe a third or something. Yeah. Well, the re <laughs> they're not no reason. The reason is that it was supposed to be awesome, but since the okay. grinding turned out to be crappy. It uh -huh. wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. Gotcha. Like gotcha. the boss battles were fun, but uh, the normal battles were not fun. And uh, and you know it was making me worry that I was going to ever finish the game in time because man, those boss battles were getting hard. I died at the scorpion boss uh, four times. Died at the oh wow. I died. I died at like every boss four times up until all the of the bosses that gave me the most trouble were the 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 ones with the, the spears, the circle with sacred orbs or whatever. Oh yeah. All of those bosses either killed me once or really came close. <laughs> I don't know. I was fine with that. Be those guys because that was the time when you uh, re you re recruit all the party members and and they're all leveled up to the new required level for the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was crazy. That was that was. I don't know if I think that was a good idea or not, but it's an I, interesting. I don't think one. I noticed that. I don't think I even because I probably wasn't paying attention to what level my guy was anyway. I was just like going through the game yeah i don't know i i could totally notice because uh when i first found metal slimes i was like okay i'll grind here a little bit try to kill some mm -hmm. metal slimes and i went up like five levels in that area and uh that was outside of galopolis before fighting the mm -hmm. scorpion boss and then when silvando joined my party he was three levels behind all my guys so i was like okay so that means i was ahead of the level the level that i should be but by the time I got Hendrick way, way later, Hendrick joined three levels above me. So I noticed that. And then everyone since then was joining a little bit higher than him, a little bit higher than the previous person, a little bit higher than the previous person. And I was like, man, <laughs> I don't have to grind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nope. The game will do it for you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Um, my turn. Did mm -hmm. you, this is just another quick one. Uh, did you not notice that you could press? Did you find this command? It's a hidden command. It's buried in the uh, in the uh, tutorials. Press triangle and then press square. Did you find that command? Triangle and then square. No. What does that do? Instant handy heal. Oh, I think I did that by accident once. I didn't know what I did. Well, I totally the... hit that once by accident. Really? Yeah. There's the handy heal in the know, menu. Yeah. But uh, there is. But yeah. I know I did something with the controller. It's like, boop. I was like, yep. what the fuck did I press? Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's just triangle square. Boom, all back to back to normal. That was awesome. <laughs> that was nice. So how I never used it. So how does it, like, where does it take that from? It takes it from Serena, I guess. That's what it always did for me, yes. usually. <laughs> okay, yeah. It must, like, calculate... Like, who's the best killer, it I pro guess. It probably calculated who's not in the party, too. I think if you have Serena mm -hmm. in the party and Rab out of the party, then they'll use Rab, maybe. Oh, maybe, I yeah. think it goes that's that usually far. Where I didn't really, I always manually heal because, like I said, I don't know. You don't trust. Stubborn. Well, you don't trust don't optimize trust, options, right? I don't right? trust optimizations. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm, no, I'll do it. <laughs> And did you not notice, and this goes to the freaking shopping, I guess, you know, you were complaining that you couldn't see all the stats. Did you not notice that you could just push square on any item in the shop and see all the details about it? Uh, yeah, I did, but there, I, there was some other instance where that doesn't come up, and I'm trying to remember. Um, no, I think you're right. Yeah, you could press triangle, and it would show you the rest of the stats. Yeah, square. But it would like flip. Oh yeah. It would like flip to a whole different page, though. I don't know, it was yes. clunkier than it needed to be. So I don't know. Comparing stats between people, uh, and I think also if you're crafting, there was some reason why I was going back and forth, and I, I guess it wasn't that exactly. But the actual crafting uh, mechanic, I liked a lot. I really liked that. I did too. Fun size <laughs> words. It was fun. 
I'm so tired of like freaking crafting systems where you have to get a million items from a million different places, though. That sucked. Yeah. I didn't really care for the like fake MMO uh. inspiration that because there are people who have said some of these design choices are definitely Dragon Quest Nine creeping in, or not Nine? Is it Ten? Maybe Ten. Yeah. Whichever one the MMO ten is. is yeah. <laughs> ten is the MMO. Yeah. Um, where you could move during the turn-based combat, and uh, there's like little resource nodes. These are all MMO things. things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't care for that. I just kind of naturally, if I found a sparkly spot, which the game is very nice and literally calls them sparkly spots. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? I noticed that too. It's I just was called like, a sparkly I spot. called that called it that in my head, and then I looked at in the menu on the map. I was like, oh, well, yeah, they know exactly what these are called. Good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Harvest um, nodes or anything? Not nothing like that. No, nothing very. You know, the, the game is very. Um, the language in the game is always very natural in that way. Like, handy heal all is yeah. a very like natural turn <laughs> of phrase, Indeed. and they're very. So that's kind of the thing they do. Um, fun size forge is another one that's great. Um, yeah, having okay. to collect all those resources not so fun. The crafting mini game itself I thought was a fun challenge because I've definitely fucked it up a bunch. I had to like kind of get good at it in a way. It yeah, and leveling up increases the number uh, amounts of focus, so you can like spend more points on, for example, the lightning bash and stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which was fun. Yeah. And I, but more than that, I really enjoyed. I mean, the original question was just, you know, the shopping's not so bad, yo. You just have to be square. But now that we're talking <laughs> about crafting, because uh, I didn't talk about it in my segment at all, um, I thought it was cool. But really, what I thought was amazing about it was the whole idea that you get these perfectionist pearls where you could start reworking stuff that you didn't make, you just bought. That was awesome to me. Yeah, I, I don't think it dawned on me that that's what I could be doing with literally every piece of gear I got. I was like, oh, sure, I could just craft up everything, yeah. and I started doing it. I didn't craft any later pieces of... Uh, I didn't rework any later pieces of armor, which I wanted to do just to see. But in the beginning, I was noticing, like, you know, a plus three on something isn't really that much better. I mean, it's literally three more defense or literally three more attack, which is kind of nothing. And... um. What I, so I was hoping they'd go up like by, by some percentage or some multiple, not just three. And then also, uh, you know, a lot of weapons and armor have abilities like prevent being beguiled by, I don't know, <laughs> like, like some small percentage, like 8%. And if I can up it up to a plus three, I want those to also increase. Because why do I need to be just 8% more protected from confusion? 8% is not enough, right? In I guess I'm just spoiled by all the other RPGs where it's like, boom, you're immune to confusion with this. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> I mean, some, some of the accessories are like, why is this even here? Yeah, One to attack. I know. 2% right? to like poison yeah. not immunity. It's like, what is this? And <laughs> nearly every shield and every accessory is like plus one percent evasion like you can't get <laughs> you cannot get a high evasion rate in this game man <laughs> yeah which, which i guess tough. would break it i guess it would break it if you could get like 15 percent evasion i guess that would be a little bit too crazy although it sure as fuck seems like some of the enemies have that <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's yeah over and over <laughs> okay that was my question uh, so the last, I think, I don't know, I've been skipping around. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. We already touched on the music. We already kind of touched on the story. Um, I guess what I'll do is I'll just go more into the story. So, yeah, the story in this game worth paying attention to. Totally. And I really did not expect that so i think in my perspective that made it make it feel maybe a little better than it was like it's, i probably walked away from it feeling like this is a much great story better mm -hmm. than it probably really is because i just was kind of blindsided by 
you know, some of the cutscenes were like Serena's like, I'm just gonna fucking suck it up yeah. and cut my hair off. And I was yeah. like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and uh just like the whole idea of like the the, the post game campaign where they set that up and like some of the shit that they do with the main bad guy and Jasper, who's just like this really sad, tragic guy. Yeah. <laughs> that's all he is. Yeah. I was like, that's really great. Hendrix an amazing character, and you kind of don't think he would be. The only one who's kind of not is, of course, you, because you're out of your lines. Yeah. <laughs> Except when you're a child. Did you say something? Which is weird. Did he say something? Hmm? When you're a child? What are you talking when about? You're, yeah. When you're a child and you see yourself as a child in the flashbacks, he says stuff. Oh, he did. He totally did. Yeah, you're right. He fucking said shit. I was like, what is this? You're not supposed to say anything. <laughs> yeah. Look at How does this make any sense at all? Totally. <laughs> oh, it's so fucking weird. I, I put that two together. Out every time. Every time. I was like, what? He's just some British kid. What? <laughs> I was hoping that they'd do like uh, one of those surprise moments where he turns around and suddenly gives a big long monologue at the end of the game. <laughs> I, I was hoping they were going to do that. Just all of a sudden he's like, well, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that Whoa! Been... Just no one's prepared for it in Dude, the whole game. Dude, yeah. So there are all kinds oh. of things that I wasn't prepared for um, in the whole ending stuff that I don't know if I should be spoiling to you specifically. Uh, Go ahead. Well, I've already want. announced to the audience mega spoilers, so if they don't want them, they can leave. But uh, <laughs> are you going to, you know, after this, we're going to have you playing the next game on our list for the next episode. Are you going to be finishing this game? I probably won't come back to this game for a while. So I think by the time I do, I probably won't remember most of what you have said. So go ahead. <laughs> say whatever you want. <laughs> Should, well, I, should I just leave it? Should I just leave it, leave you to to it in the future, or do you want to hear it? If you don't uh, want to hear it, if you think it's gonna make for an interesting discussion, go for it. Because okay. I, I really don't mind. Okay, I'll just uh, bring up one thing that they did at the very sure. end. Uh, so they they they, they brought up how uh, how the dragons are involved in the story, and I kept wondering like, what what is the dragon? Where's the dragon? There's no freaking dragon, and. They waited till the last goddamn moment in freaking Dragon Quest VIII. They waited till the last goddamn millisecond in Dragon Quest XI. <laughs> like, literally, it, there's nothing left to see. Oh, dragon's here. That's what it was. So, uh, yeah, basically, the tree is a dragon. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there's he was dragon. a dragon. And uh, he, or she, let's say, she died to, or she, yeah, she died to, uh, Col- to the main final boss, sorry. To the real final boss. I won't say the name. Not, I mean, it's just a spoiler, but it, it's named Kalasmos. So now you know. So oh, he, they said that. I remember them saying that once or twice. Yeah, okay. So And she failed to defeat Kalasmos. And so she was dead, probably. Uh, but the Watchers... Did you meet the Watchers? You did, right? Yeah, the fucking weird, weird high-pitched alien thing. dudes. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah and the Watchers uh, saved her and like turned back time and used all those little ghosts to turn back time uh but going back in time uh she couldn't continue on as a dragon for whatever reason and became a tree and and i love how they made the tree totally sentient by doing this because it kind of made everything make sense you know Mm -hmm. uh they always have these kind of mystical powers and stuff in games and you know how a dragon became a tree in the first place is a little bit unexplainable mystical thing but at least they kind of explain how the tree chose you to be the luminary and how the tree is the source of all life. They explained it. And yeah, basically, you know, I, I became a tree and I created this world and, uh, you know, I was not able to defeat Kalasmos. So I named one of my leaves, you know, one of the people, all the leaves are people, right? Mm-hmm. One of them as the luminary. And that was Erdwin, right? A long, long time ago. But mm-hmm. he couldn't defeat it either. So, um, you know, we, I kept on making luminaries, and eventually I made you, Vance, and you finally did it. Thank you. <laughs> and then, at the very, very end, when this uh, tree, which is now showing her dragon form to you, is telling you all this, she says, I du- are you ready for a mind blow, man? Go for it. I dub you the title of the Erdrick. 
Ooh, I was wondering if they were going to actually use the original name. Yeah, because they called the world Airdria, and I was like, you know, that's yeah. kind of suspicious. <laughs> and then Airdrin, and or Airdwin. Airdwin. Yeah, and Airdwin's right. Lantern. And I was wondering that, too. I was like, are they going to tie this back there? And, uh, yeah. yeah, apparently this is the very first Airdric. So, <sighs> like... The you know when you play Dragon Quest One, you're the one of the descendants of Erdrick. Uh, when you play about Dragon Quest Three, which I haven't played, it's a prequel to that one. So I guess you're the very the father of that guy, maybe. So the one Erdrick before him, but uh-huh. uh, Vance in my game was the Erdrick before all Erdricks, the first Erdrick. <laughs> oh damn! Yeah, and they basically make you like cry and bring you to tears and like say that it's all connected and. It's really dramatic, and I had a great time watching that. I just wish there was a grind. Mm. Although, I will say, as cool as that ending sounds, the ending of the original campaign, super not satisfying. Oh, the it was just ending. like you fight the final boss, and then it's just like, ah, what? We did it. Yeah. <laughs> well... <laughs> What are you really expecting, though? What, what are you waiting for? You want to see? I guess you want to see what everybody did I, I, after I, that. Yeah, I thought that was gonna come, and then the credits. Not just like the battle's over. <laughs> credits. I was like, oh, this is super sudden. <laughs> yeah, I see what you're saying. I don't know. I was very, like, I had resigned myself to accepting the death of Veronica, though, and then for them to go right after that, say, mm. "Come over here," and I go over there, and it turns out the going over there lets you turn back time freaking kind of i kind of want to say like i don't know i mean I, I had accepted all that happened that a million people died and the tree fell down and and all that stuff sure yeah but uh i don't know i guess they're like we want to give you the happiest possible ending go back in time basically anything bad that happened at any town suddenly doesn't happen anymore mm-hmm. uh you know, because the reason all those things happened was because the Dark Lord won, because Mordigan won. And mm-hmm. so, like, for example, you go back to the town of Hato, and did you see the, the scene where that where that woman is going to sacrifice a villager to the dragon in the mountain? Uh, Yeah, I didn't see the scene in the postgame. Not in the postgame, like in the main game, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, if you go there, that's not happening. So, it's basically, everything was the fault of the Dark Lord. <laughs> huh. And, uh, you know, Veronica doesn't die. Um, freaking, what's his name? Uh, Silvando. He doesn't, you don't do that quest where you need to take Silvando to, hold on. He doesn't have his uh, gang of, you know, cute, cute uh, flamboyant <laughs> boys or whatever. <laughs> he doesn't have that. Silvando's the best. He's my favorite character, actually. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking yeah. love that guy. In Japanese, his name was just a, a woman's name. Sylvia was his name. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, I thought they would. They should just keep it that way. But <laughs> so anyway, yeah. I also too really really enjoyed the story. I guess is the summary of all that. Uh, you mentioned Hato, and this is probably super obvious. You know, they all spoke in haikus, right? I was gonna ask you, did you notice they all spoke in haikus? Yeah. yeah I was... Did you notice the one scene where the kid is like? trying to train himself to do it i don't i because they all they all do it on the fly like he gets really excited like during the quest where uh you've got a like you were saying there's a dragon in the mountain or what's her name's trying to feed them to the dragon yeah um he gets really excited and he's, he's like oh strangers coming here and then he has to like catch himself and then start speaking in haiku oh man i didn't catch that oh yeah he's like <clears throat> And he starts like doing that stilted like haiku speech yeah. the way they all do because they apparently like the conceit is they all do it on the fly which is insane. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and did you notice but, uh, that uh, all the mermaids also speak in rhyme? Yeah, that one was obnoxious. <laughs> oh, or at I liked least it. with uh, at least with uh, what's her name? The, um, the now the woman who was the wife of Kai. I think I just didn't like oh, her Oh, that voice. mermaid, yeah. <laughs> she yeah. spoke way too slow. I buttoned through most of her dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her voice was really high-pitched and kind of annoying, too. It was kind of annoying. Yeah, yeah. there were some people, especially, like, whenever they were like, Ugh, I gotta go. I was like, oh, come on. Just yeah. fucking go. I see what you said. It's on the screen already. <laughs> yeah, freaking, there's a lot of, like, roaring scenes where it just says on screen, Gya, 
but like the actual sound is like god it's taking forever <laughs> skip that yeah <laughs> oh yeah skip a lot of guys in this game yeah okay uh i have like three more things i wanted to ask you about man go for it if you like yeah i'm out of like. questions okay that's fine um so yeah, you said uh, in Dragon Quest, you were happy that you wouldn't have to do like what you did in Dragon Quest Eight, where you would just traipse around a giant open field for no payoff. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I mean, there's still no payoff in this one, right? I mean, chests are the only thing. Occasionally, you find a good piece of armor. Sure. Basically, yeah. no payoff for exploration, right? Uh, yeah. There's just less of it to do, so you're wasting less of your time. Okay, but. That game had a good grind, so therefore they, <laughs> yeah. and so it felt good to go all these places, and it actually sure. had less chests. So even though there wasn't that great stuff in the chests, it still felt kind of good to find them because in like one gigantic area there was only three or four chests. Where now every dungeon, every small dungeon even has like four or five chests in it. So you, yeah. were, you were also not run into that thing where it's like. Oh, this chest way out in the middle of fucking nowhere that I'm never gonna remember is locked. Yeah, wow. And you're never true. gonna fucking remember where that chest is. Well, did you remember that all the uh, cells in the dungeon the were red locked? Doors? The cells in the dungeon. No. You maybe? know where the dungeon you get thrown into and then you meet yeah. uh Camus not Camus. His, his Japanese name is Camus. Sure. Uh Eric. You didn't like notice, dude. There are two treasure chests in that cell. Oh, but the oh, door is locked. I probably forgot. Okay. Maybe uh, I went because you go back there later, right? Yeah, but it, when you go back there later, you They're have gone. you might have like the magical key or something. Can't open uh -huh. it. You have to wait until oh. you get the ultimate key. <laughs> oh fuck! I don't have that. Yeah, because yeah. I noticed there were other doors that um, were still locked after I got the key that opens all the red ones. Hmm. I see. Yeah. <laughs> That, that that was a I made actually notes of where those all were as I was finding them. I um I don't think I made notes, but I just sort of checked everywhere because they're on the map. Whenever you open up a open oh, yeah. up the map, a little it's like they mark it for you. So I I just kind of poked around every area that I could fast travel to. Okay, that you brought up a great 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 point uh, that I I thought about that I didn't put in my questions. So I'm finding more and more, and I've noticed it since the PlayStation Two era that. I do not like this whole idea of putting one door here that you can't unlock or a chest just out of reach that you can't get to and you have to remember that it's there and come back later. Uh, if it only happened in one place or two places, I wouldn't mind. But they have one of those in every goddamn area. I am not a fan of that. And uh, mm. one of the reasons I'm not a... F the main reason I'm not a fan of that is because I think what makes a dungeon... One of the things that can make a dungeon fun is... Uh, as you go through it, one, the layout should kind of lead you through it. Like, it can have lots of side passages mm -hmm. that you maybe even have a chance to miss. But I want it, the layout to sort of lead you through it and not be and not be just a, a total open, open... I mean, if you're outside, I don't mind the open spaces. But, uh, okay, that's all I have to say is that I want it to lead you through somehow. I don't know how to enunciate it anymore. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and as you go through it, you feel like, okay, yeah, I got that chest. Okay, yeah, I solved this puzzle. Okay, yeah, I did this. And by the time you reach the end of the dungeon, I want to have the feeling that, well, I conquered everything in that dungeon. Time to move on to the next thing. And every time they leave some extra thing unfinished, it's this nagging feeling in the back of your mind. Like, do I need that? Like, I haven't finished that dungeon mm. completely. Do I really need to go back there later? Is it important? When can I go back there? And like this... Is not a fun question for me to deal with. I don't like that. I don't like that feeling. I want to just know that I've... This dungeon was carefully crafted for me to <laughs> find everything right now and complete it right now. And if I failed, it's just because I missed it. <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. it. And now it's time to move on to the next thing. Uh, so, yeah, I noticed it starting from Star Ocean 3 on PlayStation 2. They put that thing there. And later you get this... Uh, really cool item called the ring of disintegration that lets you literally destroy just walls in the game. It's pretty cool. And, uh, wow, that's and you have, nuts. yeah, it's pretty cool. They use like actual like physics and everything to like let boulders and stuff fall down. You break a wall and the walls above it fall down and stuff. It looks pretty cool. But anyway, off the topic. So I, but I started feeling 
the annoyance back then. It's like, wait a minute, wh- wh- why can't I get that chest now? And then it happens in another dungeon, in another dungeon, in another dungeon, and uh, basically you start becoming overwhelmed. Unless, of course, you're taking copious notes of every area, which I really should just do, and then maybe that won't bother me anymore. What do you think about that? Uh, that kind of stuff is the kind of stuff I have a pretty easy time putting out of my mind because it's like, all right, this is extra credit stuff. I don't feel like I'm going to, you know, critically be behind the ball, uh, if I don't get this, but if I do, and if I happen to remember, and if I am on my way to somewhere else and I stop by here and I get it, it would be really cool. So I'm always able to sort of balance it out where, like, if I get it, I get it, and it's great. If I don't, I'm just going to move on. I don't, you know, I don't, it doesn't stick in my head the way it does for you. Okay. So we're going to (laughs) be, agree to disagree on that one. (laughs) I guess, yeah. It doesn't, it just doesn't, it doesn't stick in my head that way. It doesn't, like, ah, I, I need to complete the thing. It just, um... I've always been able to sort of like compartmentalize that way and just be like, eh, we're done with that. Like I didn't do the side quest. So I was like, eh, done. Okay. I don't know. I feel like a very, very main component of what will make people say this game was awesome. Uh, you know, a lot of people say it's the story and, uh, I, I don't know what about, about that, but I, th- I think really, I think that they don't know what they're talking about. To be honest, I think mm. what they really will tell, decide whether they're going to finish a game, play it all the way in and love it to death or not is how enjo- enjoyable it is to go through dungeons. And when you play sure. a dungeon where it's like, dude, that I could see the craft work in that dungeon, how they led me through it, how, these interesting puzzles, these awesome chests, if they freaking would put them in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. That, that's, that's what feels good. And th- that's what makes you know people uh, hate random battles is when the, the dungeons aren't that cool or that interesting. And you have to go through all these battles at the same time. <laughs> mm, my, yeah, my one issue with random battles is it always makes like, ah, uh, is this a dead end? Oh, wait, can I walk over this piece of rubble? Can I, uh, like every footstep is like, I just don't want to waste time. Yeah, and, I just want to <laughs> check this one thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, it's, you know, because that's how it was in uh, Dragon Quest VIII, where all of the dungeons you could see were way more compact in design. The hallways were smaller, shorter, things were just smaller mm. because you were constantly getting into battles. So walking from one end of a hallway may have been a shorter distance, but you were taking way longer. Mm. Um, yeah. In this game, the hall, the dungeons are pretty big and vast and open. And Yeah. I don't know. I, I, like I said, I'm kind of of two minds on the random encounter thing. Uh, I liked it maybe just because it came in handy for me while playing this game for this reason, but I don't know. Okay. Uh, a quick comment. Uh, I don't think we need to be able to control the pep. That's all I want to say to that. <laughs> Why does everybody think right. I can't control the pep and so the pep sucks? It's just supposed to be an extra lucky kind of a moment, I thought. I, yeah, I can see that, um, and I guess I can see the point if only because the benefits you get from Pep are so often not great. Like sometimes, sometimes they're, not, yeah. they're good, some of them are really good, but you have to like have everyone, yeah, like be three literally people. all of them, and yeah. it has to be the the correct three people. Yeah, because <laughs> I've had it where I had a group of four people all pepped and no fucking moves. Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? And this all, should never happen. <laughs> yeah, and nearly everyone, there are a few exceptions, but like 90% of the pep moves require Vance. I uh, require the main yeah. character, sorry. Yeah, Yeah, they do. Um, and they, it's nice to give you little stat boosts while you're pepped, so it's not always the right move to immediately use the move. Sometimes you have to wait until it's almost gone and then use it. Um, I mean, it's, it's all right. I think I just prefer the more hands-on tension system where it's like, all right, I can bo- waste a turn and boost myself, and then mm. if I do it enough, I can get, you know, unlock an ability where if I'm level three tension, the way they did it in that game. Uh, because it, it felt like a mechanic they wanted to include, but also a mechanic that's easily ignored. I'm like, well, why is it there? I don't know. Mm. I see what you're saying. 
Okay. And lastly, because of how serious this be- game becomes, <laughs> do you not get annoyed by the puns and the names? Because I was, I actually was starting to dislike that a lot. The puns. Um, not because they're not funny. Of some. Um, uh, why don't any come to mind? Well, I, it, in general, the puns were usually the, uh, the, uh, um, the enemy names. Which oh sure yeah kind of didn't bother me too much but really what bothered me that uh what you know this is a localization thing I'm talking about now is the names mm-hmm. they chose for the uh for the places and so you know oh yeah I know what you mean now yeah because like freaking I know that every town in the game is modeled after Sniffle real life town yeah that was the one that made me the most annoyed why did they call it Sniffleheim? Like, oh, it's kind of dumb. It's totally dumb. <laughs> and it's supposed to be. I mean, I know it's Dragon Quest. It's all lighthearted fun, but the game was yeah. pretty serious. It and, was. And, it doesn't kind of jive with the same mood, You're right? Yeah, and so <laughs> I know that like the freaking uh, you know Yuji Horty guys and uh, whoever's in charge of the uh, localization that they totally talk a lot about what names they're going to use and stuff. And for example, in the original Japanese version, Jade's name was Martina. And I was fine with that name. And when they changed it, I didn't like it. But, you know, according to uh, the localization team, they talked about all these things with Yuji Horty himself. And they said, you know, the name Martina has this kind of feeling for Japanese Mm -hmm. people. So Mm -hmm. we had to change it to Jade to get the same feeling for, you know, the Western audiences. And it's like, okay, fine, fine. But... (laughs) I asked my wife, like, for example, I can't remember what any of the names were now, but some of the town names in Japanese, does this sound like a play on words or relating to any real-life town or anything? She's like, no, it doesn't sound like anything. It just sounds like a made-up name. Uh, and I was like, yeah, that's what I thought. So, like, why did they go and name sn- name it Sniffleheim and freaking Lonolulu like it's freaking Honolulu, even though that's Hawaii yeah. and that, game is, that area is actually supposed to be modeled after Okinawa and... <laughs> yeah. Or um what was it? Um Gondolia Hato because near a fucking volcano tot. Oh, I didn't think that was the reason. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering I'm what, sure what is Hato? Yeah, that makes sense. Which is like Japanese. If they were gonna say hot in English, they'd say hotto. Which is like yeah. the same thing. <laughs> uh, cause it's also a hot spring too. Yeah, hot spring. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, you're right. It does kind of clash a bit with the sort of the dire, um, you know, uh, setting, especially of this game in particular. But yeah. it's kind of the theme. It's kind of, I think, what they've always sort of done. Um, I don't know. Um, I, uninspired is the most I can kind of level against it. Like you said, Sniffleheim is sort of takes the wind out of <laughs> it does right yeah you know <laughs> yeah. The, the icy world should be i don't know more impactful than i got the sniffles and it's <gasps> yeah and it, i got the sniffles and it's norse mythology right like yeah mm, so Although, yeah i didn't i didn't I like know. that at all and uh they changed some okay. of the names uh like for example i thought the original japanese name for helidor was way cooler so helidor is a pretty cool name too in my opinion but in Japanese, that place was called Delkadar, and I thought that name was Whoa. freaking awesome. Why couldn't <laughs> That's they like keep it intense? De- it is right. It is intense, and they kept talking You're about like a night of Delkadar. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. I-, I wanted them to keep that name, but they didn't. <laughs> yeah, why the hell did they change it? What are they going for? I'm trying to think. Of Heliodor is that anything? I don't think it is. Yeah, like know. what? What is the uh, you know the feeling that? That Japanese people got from the name Dilkadar. That the, Dundrasil. That hel- uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Dundrasil. Yeah. I mean, sounds like Yggdrasil. Other than that, yeah, it what does. Else? And also, I don't know. They're they're what? Uh, Scottish you know, over there. That's the other thing. Everyone has like wildly different accents <laughs> yeah. when they live like ten miles away from each other. I'm like, come <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like you said, freaking New Jersey accent guy. (laughs) That fucking threw me. (laughs) Me too. Because I know that accent. Those are the people who live around me. I was like, (laughs) why is this dude who in other, why everyone else has some sort of continental European 
English accent. And here's this guy talking to you about the hot springs. <laughs> Who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Why does he have an inexplicable New York, New Jersey accent? What is going on? <laughs> I got I got very used to it by the end, but in the beginning I, got I was used to also... it. But it still occasionally came to my mind. I was like, "What? Why does Eric talk this way?" Yeah, another thing about it. Where is he from? Like, is he from uh, Sniffleheim? No, he was adopted and brought there by the Vikings. That's so where bizarre. are the Vikings from? Like, I don't know what country I, he was I, from. Who knows? I don't think they thought that hard. <laughs> Maybe not. I think uh, the actor just had to have a. A voice. I don't, yeah. I don't. You're the American dude, okay? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I'm so fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, that's all I got. So, uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, oh, before we close the show out, mm. well, yeah, let's go ahead and do the credits first. So, thank you very much for listening, everyone. And uh, this has been the 11th episode of Turn Based Memories. We hope you had a great time. And please subscribe and maybe ring the bell and, you know, do all that stuff that we want you to do but are, you know, would rather not ask you to do because it seems kind of pathetic to ask you to do it. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, I guess all that's left is to introduce the next game. So, Mel, the next game is going to be a game that I have played for Mel, who has not played it. Mm -hmm. Know anything about Chrono Trigger? Um, I think like some of our other games mm. that we have assigned to me that are big names like Chrono Trigger, uh, it's a little hard to move through the gaming space and not have caught up on some of this stuff. But I actually really don't know a ton, especially about like the specifics of the story. You know, I know Frog, I know Robo, okay. I know, you know the uh, I know what the combat system kind of is all about. At least from a glance, I I know you go between different time periods. Yeah, obviously I know it's a Super Nintendo game. Like yeah. basics. <laughs> um, Without so, saying what it what it is here to spoil it, do you know any of the spoilers? Like main story. I don't story think spoilers? I really do. I really okay. don't think I do. Like okay. I couldn't tell you what happens to any of the main characters by the end of the story. Okay, that's cool. I won't give you yeah. any hints. <laughs> um. Right. I know I know the word Lavos. Yeah, that's a word. Yeah. It's probably the most like spoilery thing I know is that the term is I'm assuming he's a boss. Okay. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, no, I, I, I picked this game up, played it for maybe two hours when it was on like the Wii U oh. shop back in the day. What? Two whole hours. And you thought, this isn't the greatest game in the entire world. I want to put it down now, huh? So I, I guess I got distracted. And I, you know, I, I moved on. I don't know. I yeah, it, tell happens. You. it happens to all of us. Yeah. It happened to me with uh, your favorite game, Skies of Arcadia. I, I played five hours, and then I just stopped for some reason. Right. I, I, same thing happened to me with Symphony of the Night. I started it. I, I, I did play through that game eventually, but I, I first started it. I was like, I'm bored. And I just didn't play it for like a year or two. <laughs> and then I went back to it later. I was like, why the fuck did I stop playing this game? Yeah, hopefully so, I have yeah, that. I don't know. We'll see if I maybe have that reaction when yeah. I uh, get through Chrono Trigger. Yeah, I hope you do. Uh, we're finally getting into games that... I think are the coolest things ever. Uh, up until now, I thought all the other games were great games uh, that I've assigned you, but mostly I assigned them to you because they're the uh, the classic literature of RPGs that kind right. of everybody should know, if you will. And so, you know, uh, I thought FF6 was a great game, uh, kind of objectively, but it's not really my main cup of tea. Right. Like, so, but Chrono Trigger is in my main cup of tea. Uh, you may have noticed it was in my top 10 RPGs of all time. So, I think this will really sort of put to the test the original premise of the show, where yes. I'm going to really be coming into this with totally fresh eyes, more or less. And then we're going to sort of see if your original experience where... How old were you when you first played this? Uh, 17, I think. 16 or 17. I, w- I will be 31 when okay. I'm first playing this. So... <laughs> Uh, we'll see if that has any significant difference on like what's forgivable or what's mm. like good or what's aged well or poor. So you know, we'll see. 
and we'll toss that all in, and hopefully we'll get that out uh, roughly in a month's time. Yeah, maybe less than a month. Uh, this one is not a 100-hour game. Not, yes. <laughs> right. So we'll see. All yeah. right. All right, that should do it. So, yeah, like Mel said, we'll get that next episode out as soon as possible. I'll get this edited and up as soon as possible. All right. And that should do it. Thank you very much, Mel. Thank you, Zofan. Yep, and thank you very much for listening. We'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.